Uh, my name is James Welsh. I'm, I'm 25 years old. I'm originally from Orlando, Florida, Central Florida area. And um, actually, I spent most of my years in Central Florida, with the exception of a couple in Tennessee, Murfreesboro. And well, I rather hated Florida, so I moved up here. That's why I'm here in this lovely environment. Uh, the cultural attitude or kind of environment in Florida is really rather stagnant. Um, I was fortunate enough to be involved in the Florida Band Masters Association sort of uh, outline of, of band programs which was fairly thorough and um, I had very good teachers um, so I, I, I guess I was blessed in a lot of ways um, despite the sort of bad circumstances many of the other students growing up probably had in their music education, so. This is fun. I think uh, when I was just a wee one, maybe several months ago, my parents took me to Pink Floyd, Wow, uh, Dark Side of the Moon, and uh, uh, my father was an amateur musician, is an amateur musician, plays guitar, harmonica, all those sorts of things, and was in the band Shredded Memories. So I was very familiar with kind of the band atmosphere. Uh, my mother doesn't sing a lick. So I, I remember a mixture of things, you know, Wagner, operas being played on, you know, LP and Pink Floyd and Super Tramp and all those sorts of fun things. So my first instrument, I wanted it to be the trombone, but uh, my arms were too short, alas. So trumpet was the first one that I took up, and I guess pre-trumpet was voice. Uh, I was singing in the Coraliers euphonium in high school, um, which kind of sprung off into baritone, did that for a number of years, went back to trumpet, and then went to French horn because that's what paid the most in college. Other secondary instruments are piano and clarinet. So. Uh, my undergraduate is uh, from Stetson University in DeLand, Florida. I came here and got my master's degree in orchestral conducting, started in 2005 and in 2007 here at Syracuse University. I think I started becoming inter interested in conducting uh, about my junior year in undergrad when I was somewhat discontent with theory and composition and I was told uh, by other people that I was okay at conducting. And so really it's kind of one of those fledgling um, interests that over the course of the, the next two years I kind of grew an interest in and uh, it really kind of just augments the fact that I like to do a lot of different things all at the same time. <laughs> when I first moved here to Syracuse uh, I was contracted out to do several conducting uh, engagements with the Syracuse Symphony Orchestra for holiday pops and orchestra concerts. So as soon as I got here, I started applying some of the techniques of conducting specifically in that realm. Basically, the conductor is largely responsible for the overall vision of a group, you know, uh, hopefully in collaboration with the musicians themselves so they feel involved in the process. But that is selection of program, that is, uh, you know, how many concerts they do, that is, uh, what sort of concerts they do. If it's a professional orchestra, it's highly political. Mm -hmm. A conductor not only is perhaps the music director, but they're also sitting on the board of trustees. They're also doing a lot of schmoozing. They're also creating an image for the orchestra um, that has everything to do with the orchestra's conceit of, you know, what sort of, uh, what sort of group they want their group to be. A lot of behind-the-scenes stuff, at least specific to me, is score study and research. Um, I guess it's more archaeological in that sense, that you become familiar with the things that have been done in the past, and then how you're going to interpret it in the future. The biggest thing that a conductor has to do for any group is to detach themselves from it. That is, have to be constantly assessing the situation while it's happening. And that brings to light, you know, the concept of, are you playing too loud, do we need you more, or um, is there a balance issue here, or <clears throat> are we going too fast, let's slow it down, is a constantly assessment, a constantly assessing the situation and um, trying to balance things and level them out. A big part of my conducting is 
talking while conducting, is getting information to them, and if I can't express it in words, then I'm doing it in gesture. I've been told that I'm perhaps at times too, I'm over expressive. My facial features are very expressive. You probably have noticed. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's no different in conducting. In fact, conducting extends beyond your hands beyond your arms, it extends further than that. It's everything body language can elicit. And at times, conducting is very minimal, and everything is done with your eyebrows, or everything is done with the shoulder shrug. We're going to go back to my sister and to the shoulder action. So everything, everything, every part of your body is involved in the process, and I think it tremendously shapes the group, especially when the group is established, you're established with the group, and you're used to seeing those sorts of ways of communicating. Well, I think there's a, there's an understanding that people are just going to come prepared, hopefully, um, so that individually there aren't any issues. And if there are individual issues, they're they're quickly um, they quickly fall by the wayside when you start attacking or or looking at the larger concept of putting it all together. It is so important to get to work quick. And so that's what I expected of rehearsal, is that we, we get to work sooner rather than later. It has transformed me immensely. I am so happy to be able in a, to be in a position where I can do all of these different things. Um, there's one way to do it, and there are probably about 25,000 other ways you can do the same thing. And it's in the selection of one of those ways that's perhaps the most exciting. I think it's absolutely important that people are open and receptive to change. Not to say that we forget all of the tradition and all of the things that have come before, but that we take that and we mold it into a new vision, a new idea, something that's exciting all the time. I absolutely think that over there needs to be a course of time where people become uh, you know, accustomed to each other. Um, every orchestra is different, every ensemble is different, and it takes that getting to know you phase uh, where you get, to, um, you get to show them your stuff and they get to show them or you, their stuff. Um, the day I stop learning is the day I want to die. And I think teaching theory, teaching, and other sort of aspects really has pushed me to accept those different ideas and to be open and receptive to, to change. Taking away the